Welcome to Nix's Musings. I am Nix, your host, and this is my channel. For those who are unaware, my channel is about various topics related to my life, from my medical conditions to everyday life to my service dog, and everything in between, including some of my passions that I like to do, such as online gaming. So, well, let's get started for the new year. Not much has happened since my last major update that I did, but other things have changed since then. In regards to some of it's my health, some of it's what I was expecting to happen and didn't, and some of it is just life in general. I know that if you've been following for any length of time, you've probably seen that I've been doing a lot of shorts. And those have been interesting to do, to say the least. I'm not quite sure about what to make of some of the shorts at the moment, because some of them do well, others do terrible. So it's either because I chose the wrong subject matter, or... I don't know. It's a title that's a problem. Not sure, but you know, maybe eventually I'll figure it out. But that being said, right now I've got a lot going on and nothing going on at the exact same time. What I mean by that is my medical is always part of the issue. This part of the month I've done a lot of reflecting, thinking, and whatnot what I would like to try and accomplish in the months to come. Plus some of the stuff that is supposed to be scheduled to happen in the months to come. In the updates for that, I am supposed to start doing the functional movement disorder therapy, physical therapy. I already had one evaluation session last year that I think went okay. The physiotherapist that oversaw it seemed to think that they could help but that it might not be as helpful as it might be for others so that's a bit of a disappointment but we'll see. I've got my next appointment in like April or May. I can't remember which but it's an online appointment, it isn't in person, so I don't know how that's going to go, but we'll find out. I have officially started going up my dosage of Ozempic. My endocrinologist wants me to eventually get up to one milligram. And so far I'm at 0.75. And the only way I've been able to do that is to split the dosage. And by that I mean I take one part of it one day and then two three days later I take the rest of the dosage. So at the moment that looks like me taking on Saturdays 0.50 and then on Thursdays 0.25. So far so good. I'm going to stay around this dosage for at least the entire month, if not slightly longer, to see how it affects my system entirely. If, knowing me, I'll probably stay on it for an entire three months just so my system can be used to it and see what the results are. Early indications are positive. I hit the scale earlier on the 15th. And according to that, I am down five pounds for the start of the year. Now, I'm happy that I've seen the scale move, but at the same time, since it's not the medical scale, it's not an official weight loss. It's just what my scale is telling me. 
And since my scale is not a medical scale, it is your average scale that is dig digital. I'm not going to say it is as reliable as a scale that is calculated every day for a clinic opens. And if you're saying they don't do that well, the one that I go to does every day. They re they calibrate their scales, so I've actually been there while they've been doing it, so I've seen it. So that's why I'm going with my official weight. But unofficially, I'm down five, which I'm happy about if it is true. Uh, what else? Well, the weather we've been having here in Ontario has been varied, especially here in the GTA. We're actually had some snow and we've had some hazardous driving conditions, but for the most part, it's just been bleep and freezing cold. You know, chilly enough that, you know, my, ru my rosacea has been really acting up. And on that front, I have seen the dermatologist my second time, and he was not thrilled with the topical cream that has been prescribed. Because in his view, it isn't working. Which means, well, he wants me to go on to a, an oral antibiotic. And the antibiotic that he has chosen is technically a no-no for anybody that has acute intermittent furia. So I'm in the quandary of should I take it or shouldn't I take it? I still haven't filled, this, filled the script yet. I'm nervous to try a medication that could trigger an episode. Especially in our current state of hospital care. Where our ER waits can be 18 hours plus. And I don't know how that may affect things if it goes wrong. Especially since porphyria is hard to treat in general. And our local hospital doesn't have a clue about it. So that's got me slightly concerned about taking it. So I'm gonna I'm I'm sin on it, whether I'm, I will or won't. I know he said that I can take it once a week and then increase the dosage to you know couple of times a week than to daily if I feel safe doing so. But that's, you know, I'm one of those ones I don't like taking medication unless I have to and I'm also worried about taking a medication that can cause medical problems. Or contradict other medic, not medication, but medical issues that I live with. So it's, eh, it's just one of those things. On the other updates, I'm pretty sure I spoke about it, but I saw my eye doctor my, for my annual visit. As a diabetic, I get to see a, um, oh, I can't remember they got what, what the title is, but it's easy eye doctor that has surgical training. Ophthalmologist or ophthalmologist? It's up, throw, whatever. But that's, according to him, my eyes are as healthy as they have ever been, if not actually healthier. Because when he did the chart, well, apparently my vision has gone up instead of staying the same or going down. So one eye is gone for like 2020, the other one's better than 2020. Which I'm actually confused about since I haven't had that kind of vision increase in since or increase. I haven't had that kind of vision since my early twenties. Everything has been doing the steady. Yeah. But at least I've said in the other video, I one one of my eyes. I think it's this one here. I've got the very beginnings of a cataract, and by the very beginnings, I mean it's like minute. It's it, he it, he says it's barely there, and he doesn't consider it 
a problem and he doesn't think it will develop overly fast if I follow the, proje the trajectory like my mom did. If I follow my dad's trajectory, I've got about a year and change before it becomes an issue. In this case, I actually hope I follow my mom's trajectory. Because the longer I can put off having surgery, the better. Uh, what else? Oh, my girl Storm has slowly done some more of her retirement. She doesn't like to work as much as she used to, but she still wants to go out when I do. She will she will bounce around, she will be like, you're not going out without me. But then there's the rare occasion that she'll be like, hmm? Oh, you're going out? Whatever. Don't care. So, when she does that, I just let her be and I go without her. The young one, on the other hand, always wants to go out regardless of what's going on. She is eager to go everywhere. And I mean eager. But that's such as her age and being a husky, so... No, that's not unexpected. Wheelchair-wise... I have not been using it as much as I was. Partially because of the weather. The, the temperatures and everything else, it's just really hard to get using it. But the other problem with using it is strength. I don't have the necessary strength to propel myself properly in it anymore. I've got issues with the, my shoulders now that is because of the chair. I've developed restrictions in them that means I can no longer this is what I can do for my above, above my shoulders. I can't put my shoulders above anymore. I can I I can't even reach above my head to pick up to get things off the shelf. My shoulders are now fro not frozen, but due to the tearing of the sh shoulder fibers even with physiotherapy I have lost a lot of the strength and the movement in them to be able to do something. So that's something we're working to try and get back by doing the physio, but there's no guarantee that I'll regain any of it back. And if I continue to use the chair as it currently stands, I will only make things worse. So I've been forced myself to not use it as much as it is handy and gives me independence. If it is going to cause me f more damage than help, I can't afford to use it because I need my shoulders and my arms to be functional. Especially for eating. And whatnot. So if I, you know, if I can't use my arms properly because the shoulders no longer function due to too much wear and tear and muscle breakdown and fiber breakdown and you know, have t torn rotator cuffs, then what am I going to do? That affects everything. So I had an OT who was looking into trying to get me an electric, but I haven't heard from them in two, three, almost four months now. I've left messages, but nobody's responded. So I guess I'm back to square one of limbo. Speaking of limbo, a Dexcom is about to expire with no ability to get more. The worker that is supposed to be overseeing the case hasn't responded. It's been two months and no response. And Dexcom is like, well, you either pay full price or stop using it. So, right now, I'm SOL. When I see my endocrinologist, I'll see if he can get me over onto the Libre 2. But because it isn't CGM, it won't give me the warnings for my glucose levels. So I have to rely on Storm to keep me alive.
because the livery won't. Unfortunately. Uh, what else? Well, I've been working on some blog posts. Some of them are still in the works because I've got I've done the you know point forms for getting ideas down. Other ones I've fleshed out, but I still have to do grammar check on it, so to speak. Punctuation, you know, the nitty gritty. I've also got some other vlogs that I've queued up, or rather, I'm queuing up. But they're mostly to do. They're mostly in a form of a podcast. So they're basically talk, touching on subjects such as service dogs, such as you know different medical, my different medical conditions. So I've got a lot of them already written. I'm just in the process of recording the actual videos for it and putting it together, which is taking longer than I want because I get sidetracked and also I just lose energy to even record. And another turn that is very positive that was actually started in last year at the end, in December, a group of us that are on a Minecraft realm have started to recreate the TU41 tutorial world. And in the past week it has boomed when it comes to the development. And I mean it has boomed. It went from just being this little itty bitty thing that was like, you know, very small and not much there to half of the actual tutorial area being completed. Still have a lot to do for the rest of it, but half the actual tutorial area is being complete. It's taken me oh, about a hundred and I think it's forty five or hundred and fifty hours so far of working on it to get to where it is. And I've still got the estimate of an average of three months for it to be maybe not one hundred percent complete, but to be in the finishing touches at least. So, um, the founder of, or the, rather the owner of the realm, he's been working tirelessly with, with some other members of the realm to clear the area that the building is being done. And some of them have started to realize just how much of a task that this is going to be. It's like, I know the realm owner is the one that put the project in place, but I think he is just starting to realize how much and how massive the project truly is. Like I already knew that there is going to be a lot behind the scenes of it that needed to get done that I can't do. I am not a redstone guru. I am not a redstone programmer. I have no clue about how to do or work with redstone. That's all in him. And I, I think he started to realize just how much he's going to have to work with the redstone or just leave it out entirely. So that's another, that's an area that he's, I think, is starting to do the OMG. But that's part of the project. There's areas that everybody is good at. There's areas that people are not good at. And I must admit, I'm enjoying doing some of the recreating of the areas. It's a bit tedious at times because my brain does the one, two, three, four. No, I mean one, two. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. Type mentality because I, I see what I'm looking at, then I'm trying to recreate it, and I talking to them while I'm doing it, and my brain does a squirrel. So that kind of throws my train of thought. I have to go right back to where I was looking at and recount, remeasure. And it gets, uh, but 
it is what it is. It has its fun moments. And if you would like to see some of those fun moments, you can pop over to my um, Twitch account and you can see some oh, some of the live stream that was done. So far there are three streams. They are over on my gaming channel, but I haven't put them live yet. I need to. But those ones there will be unedited, so they are, one of them's like five hours long, another one's like three hours long, so they're bulky. With a lot of hmm and huh and whatnot going on, so, and a lot of dead air. So I still have to edit those for size and pack it down into a bit more of a easy to easy to follow montage. Speaking of montages, I'm actually thinking of actually pulling some of my shorts on YouTube and making a compilation of my ones that are most viewed or and, mo and most viewed and then the ones that have got the highest likes. If you think that's a good idea, drop a comment or give this video a thumbs up. You know, we'll see how it goes. The more I get, the more montages of the clips I have that I'll put together. The less I get, you may just get put all into one. <laughs> Probably not. We'll see. Uh, what else? Hmm. Well, I guess that is it for now, or is it? Well, yeah, I guess it probably is that for now, because it's, I think I've covered everything that is going on for the day, or the day, the month, the week, the year, not really the year, but you know what I mean, I hope. But I can say for the future that I'm going to try to get more into doing some of these vlogs and getting them uploaded. Gonna try and get more um, of those shorts going on. Cause I really do enjoy doing them, but at the same time I get sidetracked from doing them. So I've got to work on being unsidetracked. And I'm hoping that my other updates for my actual blog, people will go over and read. Descriptions, links, and everything will be in the description section of the thing, plus you can top of the video here. Or if you go to my about page, you can find links there to my stuff right there too. Uh, hopefully everybody's good, so take care, enjoy your time, and stay safe. Thank you.